Atomic development. Woo. Nice. Um, that did not work. Spacebar, don't use it. Uh, I'm Joe. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Ovo Energy. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about two things today. The first one is atomic design. And the second one is how we can use it to share UI components across different platforms, primarily React and React Native. Cool. So atomic design uh, is a design methodology. It was created by Brad Frost. Uh, and I'm not going to go fully in depth with it today because that would probably take up the whole of my time. Um, but it, I, if you want to have a bit more of a read into it, check out that blog post. It's on Brad Frost's blog. blog Brad Frost's blog. Um, or you just Google Atomic Design, it's the first link. Uh, but the, initially what it does is it is a way of structuring your UI um, code into five layers. So you, your first layer is atoms. And this will be your dumb elements. This is your buttons or your images, whatever. Here, I'm just signifying an image, uh, which is an album cover, which is really small on this screen. I didn't realize the resolution was so high. Um, and then you have your molecules. This is where you're going to start combining your atoms together to be a bit more interesting. So here, I'm making a song listing. I'm combining an image with some text. And it's going to look nice and swanky like this. Uh, and then we get to organisms. And this is where you start combining your molecules together with other atoms. And you, you're essentially forming up bigger components, bigger portions of your screen. And these are the, probably the most important sections, because you can start then using these in multiple areas of your, of your code. And in this sense, I've got two, album, uh, two song listings and some text at the bottom saying you've reached the end of the album. The album is longer than that, honest. Um, so then we get into the ream of templates and pages. So the thing to think about here is, so far, and including templates, you don't have any data. And you also, you're not controlling the state. You're not controlling what happens when things are clicked on your app. So your template is essentially that. It's a template of your entire page at this point. But you still don't know what's going to be filling any of these areas. You're just mapping out where everything should live. So that's what a page is all about. The page is where you link your data in with your template and everything magically works and looks great. Uh, and so you're probably thinking, show some code, because talking too much already. I do have a warning. Uh, I'm using style components. Um, and yes, I know that there are other styling libraries out there. Uh, and I know React Native comes built in with style sheets. I like style components. And also, there is another use for style components. I'm really sorry about the text size on the screen. Um, hey, there we go. Uh, cool. So let's look at some code. Um, I have a nice swanky project, uh, and it's got two directories in it. This the I have a basic uh, uh, React Native init app. Nothing special happening here. Uh, all I'm really doing is importing my uh, custom component library, which I called Stylish, because it's really stylish. Um, and I'm also, I've got style components installed here because I'm using style components. Um, and then if we look at some actual app code, um, <coughs> what I'm doing here is I'm just using organisms straight from my style, my style components, uh, my component library even. Um, and so I'm actually combining both templates and pages into one page for a bit of simplicity here. But all I'm doing is I'm importing my organisms I'm creating some fake data, which is a track listing. And then I'm forming up my page. So I've got my state defined here. And I've got a handler for the button clicks. And then I've also got my, my organisms being um, displayed on screen. Nothing too swanky happening there. Um, and using, so those all come from this stylish library. Um, and I'm following the structure of that atomic design, just for, for ease. Uh, so I've got atoms, molecules, and organisms, accompanied with other things like assets and some sort of shared utilities, which might be used across projects. Nothing, nothing special really happening in any, in any of this. My, in my organisms, I have an album list, um, which you'll see is importing song listing. And it's then um, mapping over all the song, songs that it's given, displaying song listing molecules. So if we, can, we can step down a level and look at the song listing molecule. All I'm doing here is I'm using images and some text that I got out of a typography um, component that I made. 
And you guessed it, I'm just rendering it together alongside a nice clear button so I can actually control the, the on-press. So Atoms is, is where it's at. Uh, here I'm defining my base level elements. So I'm defining some text here. Um, nothing special happening. It's just a font size and a font. Uh, an image is near enough the same. I'm giving some sort of styling here. I'm giving it some, some sort of shadow and whatnot. Uh, and then I'm just rendering it within a view and then feeding it back out the door. So not a lot happening here, but it's the structure that's key. So if we quickly look at the app, um, it, lo it looks great, right? Um, the, the thing to take away, if I want to update something, say I want to update the, the color of the text, I only really need to update it one place. I can come into typography and then I can add a new color size. And then if I just give that a quick save, hop over to my terminal, which is also, everything's really small. Um, there are a couple steps. So what I'll need to do here is I'll need to build my component library. There are ways of making this easier. There's ways that you can get this to mimic straight away. If I built this, you'd be able to get it to display straight away within the app. Um, there are reasons for that, which I can touch on in a bit. Um, but for simplicity's sake, I've just built it. And here I've got my Metro bundler already running. And all I need to do is remove the old version of that library and then add a, that new compiled version that I just made, which will take two seconds. There we go. Um, and if I give it a quick refresh, the color change has happened. I realized on the screen it's really hard to see. It was black and now it's brown. Um, <laughs> didn't really think that one through, you know. Um, I, I, can, I can prove it. So let's just make it orange. Um, semicolons. And I'll do that again. I do apologize. It's all right. I fill some more time. Um, so again, built the library, removing it from the app, and then going to reinstall it. And now if we refresh, hey, it's orange. We can actually see a color change. Great. Um, and it's as easy as that. But I made one uh, code change, and it's happened across the whole app, which is great. Before I continue on and remove that, um, because otherwise the rest of everything else will look really, really bad. Um, cool. Back to this. You're probably thinking big whoop. Uh, nothing really special happening here. It's just sharing components and things are being updated. So what does this actually solve? <laughs> um, uh, because we're defining our lower level components, there's a lot more code that's shared, even just within the one app, which is great. It means that we can share our components across different areas. We can share styling and keep everything looking consistent, which is great. Uh, and we can also couple this with theming. So we can release themes. That I've done a GitHub release, like a Halloween sort of theme on the, on the website. You can do that easily with a, with a theming file and then be adopted across everything, which is great. Um, yeah, I guess that's all the pluses. Just makes it easier. Anyway, I want to talk about molecular bonds. Um, in the physics world, a molecular bond holds atoms together and keeps their structure. And in my head, this is how I vision our view elements. This is essentially defining the structure of our components and keeping things looking as we expect them to in the right order. So here, simple view element, and it's got itself a nice column direction. Beautiful. But I can then go and use that across the entirety of, of the structure, uh, which is quite handy. And this is a good way of visualizing it. If we look at a song listing with a horizontal view, we can, we can then make sure that's always going to be horizontal wherever that, that's used, and we're not defining it within the app, so then when the ne next app comes along, it uses it a little bit differently. So why am I extracting, abstracting things so in such a low level? And how does it actually relate to sharing UI components? I'm trying to get there, honestly. Um, but I need to talk about what composes the, our builds. And if you come from the web life, that's Webpack which is a giant black hole of confusion, which very rarely people find their way out of. But what it does, essentially, out of the box, is it looks for an index.js file and brings them all together and serves it up, which is great. And what about React Native? We have Metro Bundler, which is another lot of confusion for me. But this works slightly differently. It looks for a platform-specific file. Uh, and if it can't find one of these, an iOS or an Android file, it will then look for a .native file. And if it can't find a .native file, it's then just going to resort to whatever JavaScript file it can find. And this is what's really key. 
you're probably thinking, get to some sort of point that we've not seen before. But again, our platforms are going to pick their file that they need to use. And that is really important. So if we go and define every element, like, like this one, where we've got one version for web and one version for native, we can then go and define a component. And the component only needs, to, if you see, you can see uh, we've got ourselves a, we're just importing the components from the component library. But this file will work on both app and web. Because further on down the tree, we're abstracting out between different platforms. So this is what it would look like for iOS, uh, for that full component that we're showing with our layout in there. If we were then going to take this and use this for web, just take away all of the .natives and take away all of the all the .ios, and it would, and that's what the component structure is actually doing, which is really handy. So we finally gotten somewhere. It's great. Uh, I spent ages making that GIF. I really wanted to leave it in. Um, so I want to go back to style components and why I chose it. Um, style components is really like it's quite dandy. Um, this is what the import looks like for web. It's just import style from style components, and then you can use it as, as, as if. It's what it looks like for native. The only difference is a slash native. Um, and then even the styling looks the same. This is the styling for, for that view component that we had earlier. If I then look at web, it's just one line extra added, which is display flex, because everything's a flex container in native. But uh, in web, we actually need to tell it it's a flex container. Uh, so side by side, again, another slide proving the same point, I guess. Um, but the key thing to take away is that if we look at our container here, because uh, it's all going to be the same, we can even use style components here to override the styling. And that override, because the styling system is the same across the different platforms, because they're all using style components, that styling is then going to be adopted across all platforms. So any one line of change, that background color is going to change everywhere. And I'll prove it, hopefully. Um, first, what I'll do is, uh, in the same file, in the same project, sorry, that I had before, uh, actually exist some more files. Uh, I've also got a basic Create React app. And following the same structure as the, the React Native app, all it's doing is importing the, sty the stylish library and adding style components. That's it. That's all the changes I really made in it. Um, and even the app.js file is remarkably the same. This is where templates really kick in. Um, just importing the music player, and I'm importing the album list. Um, and then the styling, again, looks the same. We could have, I could have even shared that, but I'm lazy. Uh, defining our data, and then defining the same state, and then defining actions. But these actions might be slightly different, because this is for web. This isn't for native. And the structure of the component is even the same. This is why this would usually be in a template, because everything's going to look the same. I could have just passed it the extra data. Um, and if we look in our stylish component library, uh, you'll actually see, I don't know if anybody spotted it earlier. So if I go back to image, I've also got an image.js file and a native.js file. .js file is for the web. It's actually just finding an image component. And then .native, which we saw earlier, is defining an image component. And we do need the index.js file in there, because the index.js file just points to whatever it needs to. But without that link, our apps aren't going to know what to compile into the build. So everything else actually stays the same. Um, our molecules, I didn't actually hide any files from there. There's just the one file, um, song listing, and then, again, index.js files. Um, and it's the same for literally all up the chain. Only, the only thing that is different is the atoms. So if I come into the song listing, and oh, I can prove it is running, by the way. That's not all a lie. Um, this is the same, um, the same app that's running um, as this one is, using the same components. Um, look, it's still really, really swanky. So if I go into the, the project itself, and I change the background color, that shouldn't have been there. Um, of the song listing component. So, reminder, the song listing component is uh, these, I realize nobody, if I point at my screen, no one's going to notice, is these, these are the song listing components. All I'm doing is change the background color. I'm not going to go fully in depth. 
I just need to follow the same pattern I did before. Rebuild the stylish library. Uh, take a minute second. For the web one that's running, this is the red one, web one, right? I don't know, we'll find out. If my, no, it is web, cool. Um, I'm just gonna do the same thing that I do for the app. Remove the old library, add the new one, and then just run a yarn start just to get things going again. So I'll start that now, it takes a little bit longer. And for native, again, exactly the same command that I did earlier, remove the library, re-add it. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and we see, did I not remove the, I did remove the uh, brown. Hold on, if I refresh, there we go. Uh, so we see the, every, the, um, every component here for song listen has actually updated. And if I then go and look at the web version, it's also updated. I only changed one line of code, but I've affected both app and web. So that's really where the power is here. If we abstract everything, it actually makes our dev process a lot quicker. Um, again, spacebar doesn't work, does it? Um, so there's a few things extra to add for workflow on this. Some tools to make your life easier if you are sharing everything. Um, I'm not gonna go through the list. The only one I really wanna point out is uh, Storybook. Uh, if you've not used it before, it essentially allows you to run your components outside of the project that they're meant to be running in, because you define your, uh, so you run Storybook as if, it, as if it was an app, and you run it as if it was a website, and just gives it in a state that you, that you, the state that you want to run the component in, you can define in Storybook. Cool. Mm. <laughs> God damn. Um, and also, this way of working does work better if the same devs are doing both web and app. This is purely because if you're in the flow of, oh, I'm updating this component, you know what to look for when you're doing the changes. If, you, if I'm handing off to somebody else, they might miss something, which I actually needed to add in. Uh, it just makes things a bit easier. Um, it's not vital, granted. Um, but just want to highlight, just because you can share a lot of code doing this way, doesn't mean you should share everything. Just because you're defining something um, for an app doesn't mean you have to go and do it on the web unless you need it. So don't go and abstract everything because you do it as and when. Uh, that's it, really. That's all I wanted to really talk about. Um, that, that whole project that I had and the presentation are all on my GitHub, uh, JoePanel1 slash uh, sharing components talk. And I'm also on Twitter at JoePanel8. Thank you.